Hey everybody and happy Monday to you guys. I know I've been gone for a week or so, but I've been traveling. Uh, my daughter's track team was in North Carolina as well as probably a bunch of track teams all over the country uh, for their um, big junior Olympics. It's the AAU junior Olympics and I'm glad to be home. What I have definitely learned about this, I used to think that basketball, AAU basketball was crazy when it came to parents. It's not the kids, but I have just had a rude awakening with the track. I thought track was probably like one of the easiest things when it came to parents. And now I'm seeing that parents are just as cutthroat. A lot of times when you see these kids out in these sports and you wonder where they get their attitudes from, just meet the parents and you will find out. But overall, uh, my daughter had a pretty good experience. Her track team, you know, uh, she did not place this year and that's okay. This is her third year. She's getting better and better, but she did end her week by meeting, uh, an athlete that she watches on YouTube that she admires. She's a hurdler and she actually met her in person. She just actually literally ran into her and it just made her week. She's on the USA women's team, uh, you know, trying to vie for the, uh, the Olympics, the real Olympics here. So that made her weak and that's all I needed. She was just pleased as punch and she's just been on cloud nine ever since. So uh, I'm just happy to be back. All right. Traveling is not easy when you are with a bunch of children. Okay. But um, yeah, I've just been, you know, even being away, I still been keeping up with the internet. I've been still keeping up with all social media and what's been going on in the world. But, you know, I figured because I'm always around people, because I was always around people, there was no way that I was going to be able to just stop and make any kind of videos. And it was actually kind of relaxing to just, you know, be somewhere else and just chill out, enjoy the people around me, enjoy the races, enjoy the food. You know, I don't go out down south, south often. So it was just nice. It was an overall nice experience. It felt like it was like 450 degrees in Greensboro, but... Nonetheless, I think it was a great experience. So, um, like I said, while I was away, I was watching all the stuff that's been going on. And I just wanted to kind of do a little recap of what I thought that stuck out to me over the last week. Now, the first story I was going to talk about was the whole Mario Lopez story that just kind of irked my spirit. I saw it early on in the week and I saw like all the uh, controversy, so to speak, around, uh, basically what he said. Now, if y'all don't know who Mario Lopez is, if you came up with me around my age, you remember Slater, AC Slater from Saved by the Bell. All right. He's been on other stuff and he's also on Access Hollywood right now. So, uh, just a little background. Mario Lopez went on to Candace Owens, I guess, controversial talk show. Now, if you don't know who Candace Owens is, she's this black woman who is an ultra conservative. And I guess she's kind of like the, 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 she's the flavor of the month right now. A lot of people, especially white conservatives like her, because again, she's this black woman who comes from a democratic family. All right. They're Democrats, but she's decided to go rogue. And now she has all these super ultra conservative views. She loves Donald Trump and she think that, you know, black people play the race car too much. You know, her and Kanye West was cool for a minute until I guess they fell out over some mess or whatever like that. So anyway, she had Mario Lopez on her show uh, about a little over a week ago. And I guess the subject came up about transgender children and how a lot of these new age parents are allowing their children to um, choose their gender. Now... I'm going to just play a clip for you so that you can hear the conversation and so that you can understand it better. And then I'm going to come back and talk about why I think people are just doing too much when it comes to Mario Lopez. Go ahead and listen to this clip. But so there are some weird trends. And one of the weirder ones for me, at least to try to process, is this new trend where celebrities are coming out. And I know Charlize Theron did this a few a few weeks ago and saying that their child is picking their gender. And this is strange to me just because I, and they say, oh, I looked at my child, my child was swimming in a bathtub and looked up and said, mommy, I'm a boy. And that's weird to me because even though I'm not a parent, I nannied for uh, five years of my life. 
and the things that come out of children's mouth, like they are just, they say whatever in the moment. You don't know what they've seen on TV, what got in their head. And I've had children say they were mermaids. I've had children say they could fly and jump off of a staircase. And thank God I caught him, right? Because he thought he could be Superman. And so I'm trying to understand this new Hollywood mentality where they just think that their children now uh, have the mental authority and, uh, and, and I am trying clarity. to understand it myself. And please don't lump me into that whole. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I see you're not doing that in your household. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of blown away too. And um, look, I'm never one to tell anyone how to parent their kids, obviously. And I think if you come from Maybe a place. Maybe you should, though, because you yeah. seem to be doing something <laughs> right. right. Well, thanks. You know, and I always say, if you come from a place of love, you, you know, you, you really can't go wrong. But at the same time, my God, if you're three years old and you're saying you're feeling a certain way, you're, 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 you think you're a boy or a girl, whatever the case may be. I I could I, I just think it's dangerous as a parent to make that determination then, okay, well, then you're going to be a boy or a girl, whatever the case may be. And it's it's sort of alarming. And my gosh, I just think about the repercussions later on. Right. And, and, uh, to me, I just see depression because I, when I was uh, in fifth grade, I don't know, it was this weird thing in fifth grade where me and my girlfriend, Molly, like we just, we were tomboys. We just were like, we're tomboys now. So we'd wear like baggier pants. The cargo pants were in yeah, yeah, yeah. and I tried to make my voice a little bit deeper. <laughs> One year, went to middle school and everything was fine. You know, right. it was just a phase. And I hadn't gone through puberty yet. Like, you can't make a decision about your sexuality when you're three years old. I was in well, fifth grade. Well, that's just that I don't think you're, when you're a kid, I, you know, I, at least when I was a kid, I remember kids still think my daughter, so some boys have cooties and that's it. You know what right. I mean? They're so, I don't think they, they they're, that, that, you don't know anything about sexuality yet. You're, you're just a kid. Right. And so then making that determination so young, right. I just see, like, if my parents, when I, it was like, I'm going to be a boy today, shaved mm. my head, mm. and we're like, that's, you've made the decision. No, I right. can't even imagine how depressed I'd be once I went through puberty, once I started liking guys, yeah. and then having made up my mind when I was in fifth grade. And I think that's that's a really scary trend that we're seeing coming out of Hollywood right now. And at the core of it, to me, seems like narcissism, like virtue signaling. Like you just want to say, I'm so tolerant and I'm so accepting that whatever my kid wants to do, they can do. Yeah. I I think as parents need to allow their kids to be kids, but at the same time, you got to be the adult in the (laughs) the situation. So I heard this conversation and shortly after, I guess this aired, Mario Lopez was getting dragged all over social media, especially from the LGBT community. And they wanted to basically cancel him. They wanted him fired off of his show. And, you know, once again, I feel like people are doing too much when it comes to someone else's opinion. At the end of the day, She asked him a question, Candace Owens did, and I don't always agree with her. I don't agree with her probably 96% of the time. But she asked him a question and he answered it. It was his opinion. And I think, especially right now in this current climate that we are in, people get heavily mad triggered over someone else's opinion something that they think they're not saying that this is how the world they're saying this is how I feel about this thing that this person is asking me and you want to cancel somebody over something that they feel about what they feel in their household he is a parent okay at the end of the day he is a parent and if he feels that in his household he does not want his child to come up in say, this is what I want to be. I want to choose my gender. And you say, okay, cool. That's his, that's how he feels. And right. That's his opinion. He has the right to feel that way. All right. Now this stemmed from Charlize Theron. If if you don't know who she is, she's a, she's a, a South, she's an actress. She's a South African actress. And if you don't know this, she adopted uh, a, a, a black boy years ago. Okay, I think she has two kids now, but she adopted a black boy years ago. And she came out and said that when he was like, what, two, three years old or something like that, he said he wanted to be a girl. And so she obliged. And if you see pictures, all you got to do is Google them. If you see pictures, she now has this boy that now 
uh, identifies as a girl. Now, listen, for the record, I'm always, and I have always been very sensitive to the LGBT community. Uh, I have family and friends that are a part of that community. I don't, sp- I don't personally know anyone that's trans. So I cannot put myself in a position to say I understand what it must be like to grow up thinking or feeling like you are of another gender. I think the problem here is, is that a lot of times people misconstrue or misunderstand that gender and sexuality are indeed two different things. So I think that Candace and Mario Lopez's conversation probably was flawed from on one part of it was flawed simply because they were actually mixing the two. All right. Sexuality is not the same as gender. Okay. Uh, now I will agree. I have to say there are parts of that conversation in which I actually agree with. I don't think that a three-year-old should, uh, make a decision like that or say, Hey, I, I, I feel like I want to be a boy. And you oblige simply because your three-year-old says you want to be a boy. Now, I don't want to simplify it by saying, well, yes, kids, you know, come up to me all the time. Now, listen, I used to be a teacher. So yes, it is true that kids want to be a whole lot of different things. And so if your child is coming up to you and expressing that they want to be a different gender, that's not something that I would jump on at three years old. I wouldn't jump on that at five. I probably wouldn't jump on that at eight or nine or 10 or 11. I feel like, I would definitely listen to my child. And if this is something that's constantly coming up, then that's something that we will have to try to understand and explore. But to jump on that is what they were saying. I felt like that's what their conversation was. It's like a lot of these Hollywood parents are just jumping on it. It's like, oh, well, my job, I'm, I'm raising my child not to have a gender. So they're not going to be gender specific. Okay. Don't call them a boy or a girl. That is a bit over the top for me. I got to admit that's just too much. All right. That's too much for me. That is not how I would raise my children. People have the right to raise their kids however they want. And I feel like it's bully. You know how it's, it's interesting to me and please don't get offended my friends in the LGBT community, but I find it really interesting how people can sit here and say things like, um, you know, we feel discriminated against, we feel bullied. But then when this man has an opinion, you're now bullying him. I saw the bullying online of Mario Lopez simply because of his opinion, all right? You cannot force somebody to feel the way you feel or to think the way you think, okay? Again, I don't agree with that. I don't I don't think that a three-year-old should say, mommy, I want to be a boy, and then all of a sudden I'm going to start obliging to that because give her to, you just don't know that child isn't developed enough yet in my opinion to make those kind of life altering decisions that I'm going to now change them into a boy all right because they feel like they're a boy right now okay give it time i would say let them go through puberty i don't want my child to suffer i don't want any child to suffer if this is how they're feeling but i in my house i can't say that i could do that and even though i love my friends in the community. Okay. I cannot say that I can just go along with changing my child's gender simply because they're, they're feeling like that right now. Okay. That would, that would take some, to me to make sure that that is exactly what you want to do. I would, I would not jump on that. That's something that I feel like we would have to wait on. All right, because you just don't know how that kid is going to feel in a few years. What if that's something that they want to go back and change again? I just, that's just too much. But let's get back to the the thing at hand here. Canceling Mario Lopez because of the opinion. That's the problem I'm having, is that people don't want anybody else to have an opinion about something. Just because people don't want to go along with you doesn't mean that they should be canceled. This cancel culture is bullshit anyway, because at the end of the day, I just don't feel like people, a lot of people have the power to cancel anybody. You're not the powers that be, and you don't hold the cards. You don't have the money. So you can't technically cancel people. All right. That's why Kanye West was never canceled. Even though 
Kanye West so, says some controversial things. You know why you can't cancel somebody like Kanye West? Because he can't be canceled. All right. Even if you don't agree with him, he's entitled to his opinion. And I agree. I don't agree with most of the stuff he says, but he still has a right to say it at the end of the day. He just does. Just like Mario Lopez. Don't try to cancel this man's uh, uh, career because you didn't like what he said. He also talked about some stuff in the Me Too movement. And a lot of people got upset with him about that. They got upset because he was saying that, you know, um, some women lie and they're not being truthful and they end up like, you know, basically destroying a person's livelihood based off of lies. We saw this just happen in Wisconsin, a, a, a former uh, college athlete. He was just found not guilty for sexual assault of, of this young white woman that he had supposedly was out with or something like that. The jury found him not guilty, but just think about how his life was destroyed prior to that not guilty verdict. They had already deemed him, society had already deemed him a predator and he was found not guilty. And you looked at all the evidence prior to all of this, he, it was nothing he did that warranted this kind of response, warranted it being called sexual assault. And yet his career is ruined. It just is. His College career as a football player is done. He is done. Whether it was football, I don't know if it's football, maybe it was basketball. I don't know. But whatever it was, I know he was an athlete. And he was accused of something he didn't do. And he is destroyed. Now, I know for the most part, most of these accusations, in many cases, they they there there is some truth to them, but they have to be investigated. The problem is, is that the court of public opinion paints all these men and people that are accused with a bra brush. So groping at this day and age is also considered sexual assault. All right. Saying something dirty to a woman that he shouldn't say. All right. That you shouldn't sexually harass your, your coworkers and stuff like that. But it's painted with a broad brush. So now everything is sexual assault. And I feel like all Mario Lopez was saying is that, you know what? We just got to re- just just slow it down. This Me Too movement has taken over and it has painted everybody with a broad brush. And I think he was right. Now, I know a lot of people aren't going to want to hear that. They don't want to hear anything like that. But I just think he was right in that. All right. But moving on, uh, ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky is now home. Uh, good for him, I guess. I hope he's learned his lesson. Uh, he, I, I guess what I like about the Swedish government is they do do things pretty fast. I know a lot of people felt like he was in there too long. Me personally, I hope it was a wake up call for his ass. You know, the same person that said he don't believe in black lives matter. He don't care about all those issues. He ain't Al Sharpton. That stuff don't affect him because he live in Soho and Beverly Hills. So he just don't care about stuff like that. I hope he had time to sit there and realize, uh, and I hope he see all of the comments that people were making when he get now I'm sure he's back on social media so he could see that people really was not feeling him and they didn't give a damn all right maybe this will wake him up and he'll realize dude you really not that special and at the end of the day you're still black you're still black at the end of the day and you wanted that support all these celebrities wanted us to support you and we just wasn't feeling you and we didn't care all right. So I'm just hoping that this has uh, awakened him and realized that, you know, at the end of the day, all the money in the world don't stop you from being black, sir. All the money in the world ain't going to stop you from being a black man. And you just need to understand that and you need to get that in your head because we just didn't give a damn. I'm sorry. Now, I don't think that it was right for him to be um, uh, locked up for that altercation because honestly he did not provoke that now he shouldn't at the end of the day when you're in somebody else's country you got to know the rules and you got to know the laws but he did not start that and I don't think it was fair for him to be locked up but at the same time I didn't care either I just didn't and I know a lot of people think that we're cruel for just being like oh it's above us we don't care only because again this is a dude that showed that he don't care about black people and let's not even get on the fact that he made a lot of fucked up statements about black women all right he made a lot of nasty comments and I'm just tired of black women always having to put the cape on that you guys probably heard this when I was in North Carolina I heard that some woman got arrested for making some kind of bomb threats or something like that, threatening to blow up some embassy, U.S. embassy over ASAP. 
And you think he give a damn about her black ass? You think he cares that this black woman attempted to go all out and cape for him? You think he going to bail her out and help her with money? No, because at the end of the day, remember, he don't care. He just don't care. And it really is sad to me that this is, I hope, but like I said, I hope his attitude has changed. I hope him sitting in that Swedish jail changed him and has changed his attitude about black people. And that, you know, at the end of the day, no matter how much money you have, we all in the same group. We, we all, we all in the same group. Okay. Because our blackness will only take us so far or I'm sorry, our money will only take us so far when it comes to things like this. Okay. Because his money didn't mean a damn thing over in Sweden. It may have meant, meant something over here in the good old U S of a, but it didn't mean a damn thing in Sweden. And I hope that he has changed his, his tune and learned his lesson, but I'm willing to bet he didn't. I'm willing to bet that he is still the same old fool that went into jail about a month ago. But moving on, <clears throat> um, I guess people ready to send out their thoughts and prayers uh, and love to the mass shootings that's just happened uh, in the last couple of days or so. And I wonder when people are going to get tired of realizing that thoughts and prayers just ain't cutting it. Thoughts and prayers don't do nothing when it comes to mass shootings and people getting gunned down every day over some foolishness, over hate. Now you see what happened down in El Paso where a white supremacist, and that's what he was, drove all like 600 miles from his rich, ritzy mansion to shoot up a bunch of uh, Latinos in a Walmart. Shot 20 of them dead injured of dozens of more dozens of people were injured at the same time. Okay. Um, all because, you know, he thinks that they shouldn't be here and he got his cues from the president of the United States who, who basically wants to pretend like he doesn't have anything to do with that, that his hands are clean, that he didn't inspire anybody to have these kind of attitudes. Now I know white supremacy went on, was going on long before he got into office. All right. But at the same time, this is a man who gets up there and tells people or lets them chant, send them back, send them back. Okay. So he, his hands are dirty. His hands are very, very dirty. And then you have the shooting in uh, Dayton who left a whole lot of black people dead. Now I was watching good morning America this morning. I'm just thinking to myself, you know, one thing that's dangerous about the media, they always say, if you watch the news, or if you don't know, let me take it back. If you don't watch the news, you're not informed. And if you do watch the news, you're misinformed. You Basically, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And I sat there and watched Good Morning America when they were talking about the, the shooting in Dayton. And all I could think to myself is I see how they're trying to paint this. They didn't want to call it white supremacy, of course, because they don't want to say that. They didn't even, they failed to mention that the majority of the people, like 90 8% of the people that that man shot were black people. He was dressed in all black. He was another white supremacist who shot a bunch of black people, but you know, whose faces that they put on, on the screen, he shot his sister and her boyfriend. And those are the two victims that they put on TV. Now God rest their souls. That it doesn't make them any less important. I'm not saying that at all, but I just find it interesting that when good morning America decided to, uh, report on the Dayton shooting, they only showed two victims and they were white and they took the angle along while well, he shot his sister and he didn't, they didn't say that that was her boyfriend, but that was her boyfriend because reports came out that that was her boyfriend. They didn't, they failed to mention that all the people he shot and killed, including injuring dozens more were all black people. They were out they were out having a good time at a, a club, a bar type of situation. And he just mowed them down. Bodies everywhere. Black. They didn't want to say that. They didn't want to take that angle because they already had one white supremacist that had shot a whole bunch of people in Texas. And they didn't really want to go there and say, well, there's another white supremacist in Ohio. You know, they want to take the, oh, it's the video games. It's, oh, and please don't, let's start with the mental illness. How much you want to bet? I'm willing to bet every dime in my bank account 
that today they're going to come out and say, oh, he had a mental illness. All right. He was a loner. He was a good kid. You know, they don't want to just come out and say that these are white supremacists that hate black people, that hate Hispanic people, that have been inspired by their leader, uh, the president of the United States. They don't want to come out and say that. That's not the narrative that they want to take. So I, I, even though I was disappointed in how Good Morning America painted the narrative today, I'm not shocked because this is what the media does. All right. So I'm expecting the whole mental illness angle to come up in a couple of hours or so. I'm sure they're going to start diving deep into this dude and they're going to want to go ahead and uh, let us know that it was mental illness and that he had a problem, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just, I'm tired of the thoughts and prayers. The thoughts and prayers ain't helping y'all. Seriously, the thoughts and prayers is not helping. And the government, the Congress, they're not ready to go ahead and ban these assault weapons because they get money, you know, on the backside. And they ain't even mentioned what happened in Chicago. All right. Dozens of people were killed in Chicago. So many that they had to actually shut down a hospital emergency room in Chicago and say, we can't take no more people. We can't take any more people here. And yet they don't even mention it. It wasn't even mentioned because I guess it's just another day in Chicago as if those aren't mass shootings. Those are still mass shootings. Okay. Those are still mass shootings and people are still getting killed. So, um, I don't know. It's just sad, but I'm just sick of the thoughts and prayers because they're not helping. I don't know what y'all feel about that but I just think that you know it's something else has to be done can't just keep you can't pray this away you can't but anyway I have some more videos coming up I'm going to do one about Regine and her boyfriend and um Floyd Mayweather's daughter too so um I guess I'll see you guys on the next video I'm glad to be back home and um yeah other than that I guess I got to do some unpacking my kid starts her freshman year of high school in about a week or so and so we got to get ready for that. So uh, anyway, glad to be back and I'll talk to you guys on the next video.